you recently published your second book, actually, and it shook one about how your fears and anxieties have propelled you to success. And I've, I've read this book, and I, I'm going to talk about why I think it's really groundbreaking, but why did you decide to write a book about mental health? You know, that's interesting because I didn't set out to write a book about mental health. I just wanted to get a handle on my anxiety because, you know, I've had anxiety for my, my whole life. And nine years ago, I got diagnosed with it. I remember um, I had just got fired from radio for the fourth time. As you can see from that package, you could probably see why. But I got, <laughs> I got fired from radio for the fourth time. I was like 31, 32 years old. I had to move back to South Carolina from New York, living with my mom. My daughter was like two. My now wife was back living with her mom and dad. And I remember just driving down the highway, feeling like I was about to have a heart attack, like, you know, heart beating fast, yeah. shortness of breath, even convinced myself my my, my arm was going numb and I went to the doctor and he was like, you're fine. You're, you got an athlete's heart. And he was like, do you suffer from anxiety? And I was like, no. And he was like, it sounded like you had a panic attack. He said, are you stressed about anything? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so in my mind, I'm thinking that all I got to do is get me another job, get back in position and everything will be fine. But then, you know, seven, eight years later, I'm, I'm 39 years old and things are overwhelming because Life is good, but a lot more pressures come with that. So I just decided to say, you know what? Let me finally start going to therapy to get a handle on my anxiety. When you're sitting with a therapist, you start unpacking things that you didn't even realize were there. Right. You know? Yeah, one thing leads to another. Oh, my and then God. Another. So you, lead to the, you get to the source of your PTSD and then trauma from <clears> things that happened to you when you was younger and, you know, daddy issues with my father. Like, I thought I loved my father. Then I started <laughs> hating my father. Yeah. And then I started loving him again. It's just like... You know, so that, I just, that just turned into to that. Yeah. So tell everybody what Shook One means. Shook One is the title of a, a classic Mob Deep record. And, you know, growing up in the hood, that was the last thing you wanted to be. You know, uh, you didn't want to be a shook individual. Shook meant that you were soft or you were scared. You know, you had to be hardcore. Like, and, you know, I like to live my truth so nobody can use my truth against me. So instead of running from the term shook, I'm embracing it. This is... Um... For, for a black man to come out and talk about this as openly as you do is a rare thing. You know, I'm, I'm a God-fearing man, you know, so I feel like sometimes, you know, God lets things happen to you so he can work through you. Yeah. And I think the easiest thing for me to do is just share my experiences. Like, I'm not an expert at anything. I don't have any doctor in front of my name, okay? I didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't even go to college. I don't have a degree. So I'm not an expert at anything. I just have some experiences. So one of the easiest ways for me to even deal with the things I'm dealing with is to talk about it. That's why I'm so glad I have radio. I'm so glad I have podcasts. And, you know, I feel like just sharing that experience is what's going to make other people speak up. And I didn't realize that, you know, it was such a need. 